Hello friends. Today we're going to be fitting up the uh, top skins, top uh, tail cone skins to the fuselage here. As you can see, we've already done a lot of work on the, the fuselage to get things fit up. I wanted to wait. I went back and forth on this for a long time. I wanted to wait until I had everything for the tail before I made these top skins for it. Uh, meaning the wiring, and I knew where the avionics were going to go, where the antennas need to go, where, um, you know, I'm going to put a beacon light on it, where the beacon light goes, um, what gauge wire you have to have um, that goes to the trim servo and the elevator. Of course, it, it did come with that, so I didn't know that wire. But um, I'm going to have a tail light on it, so I had to figure that out. And even just deciding on what lights go where, that took quite a while. Um, I got the ELT installed in the tail. Um, we wanted to get that done. Uh, before we did the these tail top skins. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get things started off and have a good day working on this project. Onward and upward. Okay, so correction, it's not 14 holes, it's 13 holes. 13 additional holes from the end of the skin will get you the right length so that it mates with the cage okay. Just wanted to make that correction. Otherwise, we've got all of these stringers are all cut to length. They're all deburred. Pens are sanded so they're smooth. And I think we're ready to move on. All right, I have finally made a decision about this wiring situation and finishing the tail cone skins and riveting them. Here is what I have decided. I'm putting this out there to the universe. We're gonna test it out right now. And if it works, we're going with it. And we're gonna, sometimes you just gotta make a decision, right? So, I got this quite a while ago. This is three quarter inch. This is, um, you know, like a cable cover. Um, I got it off of uh, Amazon and I don't know the exact product number, but I can definitely find that out and I will get it in this video. Nonetheless, I tried this earlier and it seemed to work pretty well. What I did was I ran this through here and the little corner here by this bulkhead through the next one then through the circle and bulkhead number six. Then I took um, one grip tie around my tail pull bar and another one here, because I just wanted this to get this up, give it some slack, keep it out of the way from the rudder cables. This feeds really easily all the way down. I tested about six feet or so before, but if we can feed this all the way down there to the tail, including going up the little slope down there by the good tie, I would say I'm ready to run this cable sheathing or whatever you want to call it. Um, run it, one run of it on the other side so that we've got a spot for antenna cables and power cables on both sides. Ideally we would separate those of course, but anyway, I would feel comfortable enough closing things up if I know that we can easily feed a wire. And this is feeding a wire too. This, you, know, you can always pull a wire too. You can feed it through this. You can easily pull it through this. So far it's going pretty smooth. I can see it wiggling. I can see it wiggling down there. See how far it made it. All right, we made it down to this far. And this is all the way down by the axis covers. Past both of the axis covers. Just past both of the axis numbers. I mean, I'm pretty comfortable closing things up knowing that I can easily pull whatever wires need to be pulled through this cable cover. We've got it, you know, slack on it. It's held up here, easy to get to. I feel pretty good about that. So I'm ready to continue closing up the tail. And as long as I've got the doublers for the antenna, 
mounted to the top skin. Then I'm ready to roll. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the antenna doublers. I'm only going to put one on the top skin, one on the bottom skin. Those are both con antennas. It's going to go just in front of station five. All right, so here we are. We've got the black wire loom uh, running down both sides over the tail dragger. That's a BAS tail dragger pull handle across the back there and grip ties um, just to hold it up there loosely. I feel pretty good about this solution. Time will tell, I suppose. And this is what I ordered. This is black braided cable management sleeves wire loom tubing cord protector self-wrapping. Pretty good solution, really inexpensive. Well, the one inch was two bucks a foot. The quarter inch is, or sorry, half inch. It's a little bit old. Let's see here, the half inch is like a dollar ten a foot, something about like that. And so I got the one inch. Can you see this? Yes, I got the one inch and I got half inch thinking that the half inch actually stretches to like three quarters easy so if this is too big and you want a snug fit this half inch will be more than enough to hold a big bundles big bundle of wire if you want a tighter fit I wanted a looser fit so that I could easily fish this wire or any others through it in the future so anyway onward and upward All right, so this is the doubler plate that I got from the avionics company I'm working with called Steinair, um, popular company. Anyway, I got the doubler plate for the comm antenna, and I went ahead and countersunk these rivets because this is going to go up flush with the skin. And I've seen that like even on these, and I might even take these out and countersink these because this little bit that's raised right here will put an indentation in the skin or for this situation you know the forward baggage compartment floor if you tighten the screw down you get a little dimpling in the skin so i countersunk these and um and i think that'll make a difference so i'm going to put this just forward of station five right in the middle well just off to one side and then we'll rivet it to the bulkhead and the skin there and that will be our com one of our common tenants. One other thing I was gonna add about these nut plates is this is the first time that I've seen this. These are the nut plates that Steinair sent with the plate. And the part that you rivet to the plate is one piece. And then the part that the screw or the bolt screws into is actually just very slightly movable inside of there. And that way, when you screw on the antenna, you get, because this can move just ever so slightly, you don't get any lateral forces, you get only vertical forces that allows that nut that's back there to line up perfectly. So I thought that was a pretty cool design. Okay, so I have decided that the doubler plate for the comm antenna is going to go right here. And it's going to fit up with these rivets that go through the bulkhead number five. So I put it in there, marked a couple of spots on the plate. Now we're going to go and punch it and drill the holes. All right, so this is a, a click punch on one of the holes and you just push down on it nice and hard. I usually do it twice and it leaves a little indentation there where the drill can uh, get started and stay centered. So we'll do that on all four of these holes and then take it back. All right, so now we've got the doubler for the comm antenna clicoed on in the initial four holes that we made. We'll use a square, builder square, to mark two more holes, two inches apart. And now we will match drill those into the, through the skin and the plate. And then we'll have um, good reinforcement for this plate and the antenna that's going to go on it. All right, so we're just getting ready to edge form. This is the, the bottom edge of the top side skin for the fuselage. So, got a little edge forming tool.
clamp the skin down before you do this. And now I've got a nice preformed edge that I can show you. Those lights are bright. But you can see it's like a four degree, just a four degree bend right there at the edge and it helps seal it down. Just test fitting this antenna for the first time on the doubler plate, making sure that it seats passively. And there's no binding or lateral forces on the screws that the uh, BNC connector is in the middle here. So it all looks good. Doublers are complete. Um, the aft one, the one with the hole in the middle is for the comm antenna and well, one of the comm antennas. And the other doubler is for a beacon if I want to add one in the future. I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to do that, but I wanted the option there. So, Okay, well, this has been fun, getting these um, tail top skins lined up with the holes and all the bulkheads going all the way down. So what I did find works well is if you do the, the top on the corner and the side top on the corner. If you do this one and this one, this one and this one, this one and this one, and all the way down, then you can do the laundrons and the rest of the bulkheads. But if you don't get those ones on the corners first, then it's a real bear. So now that I have this thing, the skins all fitted up, all the holes match up, I get to put the tiny little Clecos in, all of these holes all the way down the spine, drill them all out to a 30 size, and then take the whole thing apart, deburr these holes, and put it all back together again. Sweet. Very. All right, well, we've got the tail cone top skins ready to rivet. Um, so they've all been, mat been match drilled, deburred, edge formed here, edge formed on the sides, everything, you know, all the holes line up and match up. Um, one last thing to do before I rivet is to do the window support angle that goes from here to here. The reason is it comes down here and tucks underneath here and we'll have to put in a couple of rivets back here. So probably just fit that up before we do the rivets. Otherwise, ready to get this stage done with and finished and riveted and secure. That's all. All right, here we go. We've got a spot for our COM1 antenna on the belly skin. We've got a spot for a beacon on the belly. There's our ELT. We've got a spot, let's see here. There's the COM2 antenna and a spot for the beacon on the top tail skin. It's looking good. Now we just gotta install the ELT antenna. We're gonna keep that in the tail. There's the doubler for that back there. And install the GMU 11 cable because that'll be a lot easier to deal with the skin off than with it on. So here we go. All right, one last thing before we close up this tail. We've got the Artex ELT antenna mounted on the bottom of bulkhead six. Wire tied up in the corner, wire tied down there, plenty of slack hooked up to our beautiful ELT that we hopefully never need. All right, so I've got the GMU 11, that's the magnetometer there, essentially the electronic version of a magnetic compass. And um, we, I went ahead and wire tied these two so you don't have to worry about these back in and out. And I put the, the twist over here so that if you had to reach up inside these access holes and cut this to get it out, you could easily cut it without worrying about cutting all these. And I ran the other wires for the tail light and the trim servo through this wire loom. Sure, I'm glad that I did this before I riveted the tail cone top skin. Now I'm just gonna put a little bit, um, a little narrower gauge of the loom just from here to here just to protect it around this loop here. All 
All right, now that we um, have all those wires around, I just went ahead and put them in a little Ziploc bag, bundled them all up so that they stay clean and organized and they don't get all over the place. But I think now we're ready to put the other half of the tail top skin, which is actually up there on top of the cage. We'll go ahead and put that on there and get it riveted up. So here I am getting ready to put the right side of the tail cone top skin on and start riveting it. I'm back there towards the tail thinking, wait a second, what about the tail wheel? So I come over here to the parts description and I read the description in the text manual. And there are some bolts that are gonna go up through the skin and through these you know, doubler plates and um, attach blocks. And I'm pretty sure that those holes are not drilled through the skin. I'm thinking it's probably gonna be a pretty good idea for us to install this tail wheel prior to riveting the tail skins on because yes, that hole right there has not been drilled and that sure would be a lot of fun to do from that through this bottom axis hole, right? Same thing with these two holes. Probably wanna drill these things while we can. So that's my plan. We'll go ahead and do the tail wheel installation. Okay, so tip. You might wanna drill these holes for reference, this is where we are on the tail. Might want to drill these holes before now and definitely before you rivet on the top tail cone skins. So that is gonna take some creativity to get that hole drilled. And I will show you whatever apparatus I come up with. This is what it's gonna take. Thank goodness for Milwaukee tools. So this is an angled drill here on top. This, let's see if I get it off here. This is a right angle adapter that I got quite a while ago from Milwaukee, like years ago. It's come in handy quite a few times. And then this is something I, I don't know, was served an ad for a long time ago, like in the fall. And I saw this thing and I was like, you know, I am sure that thing would come in handy. It was probably only five bucks, but you can swivel it around like it was, or you can lock it in so that it's straight. If you slide that black thing up, then it'll be locked in straight. And if you slide it down, then it unlocks that the ball there and we'll let it swivel. So that's how we're going to do it. And we have a tail wheel. It was uh, pretty straightforward putting all the parts together um, with the exception of just making sure you get those holes drilled prior to putting on the top skin. Man, am I glad that I did that. Um, so anyway, onward and upward. Time to finally, I know I think I've said this about 20 times, but now I'm gonna rivet on the top skin. We'll see if that actually happens. All right, so thanks for watching this episode. I think this is probably a good spot to end the the video. We got a lot accomplished. This took me quite a while to really, you know, get everything situated and ready to rivet that top um, that top tail cone skin. And um, we made a lot of progress. It got riveted, and then the next episode we'll do the the top forward um, tail cone skins and the window support angle, etc. That includes some antenna doublers that go up there for the GPS antennas, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching, and subscribe and like the video. Thanks.